Welcome to a new scented video. I'm Stella and in today's video we're going to be doing a perfume tag video and this one was created initially by the Simple Chic Life so thank you so much for coming up with these 10 questions. It was really really challenging for me to pinpoint the exact 10 perfumes so maybe I have cheated a little bit, we will see, but uh, let's get into it and see what I came up with. Question number one is which was your niche gateway scent and for me kind of hard to remember really, I have really bad memory by the way, um, hard to remember which one was the exact one but I think, I think it was Roses Vanille by Mancera and this one is if you have tried it an extremely sweet vanilla rose, it's exactly what it says on the tin but it's very very beautiful and um, honestly, it's strong. All of the Monceros are. This is kind of nuclear power of uh, vanilla, sugar and rose. And it lasts for ages. It develops really beautifully. Um, I mean, into the skin, it kind of blends in and warms up as you wear it. Strangely enough, I find that Mancera Roses Vanille and uh, Delina Exclusive share similarities. They are not dupes, but very similar on the rosiness and the sweetness. Minus this one does not have the citrusy, uh, I think it's a rhubarb vibe in uh, Delina Exclusive. The other one is much more complex, but it's also, of course, more expensive. I think this one has a monstrous uh, performance and it's great. I love uh, actually to try more Monceros and I might have one more on the way. But yeah, I think this one was my niche gateway perfume. Question number two, which is your significant other's favorite scent on you? Tricky question for me because I currently don't really have a significant other, so I have to use my imagination. Uh, in my experience, what men tend to like on me are, first of all, they don't much care for fragrance, at least in my experience, and uh, that's really sad because I love perfume. But uh, what I find is that the men in my life have been drawn to either very sweet Gun and Gourmandy scents or something really inoffensive, kind of floral, very safe perfume, which is kind of barely there. But if I would know a man who <laughs> really is into perfume, I think I feel most uh, kind of seductive vibes with the Rouge Malachite by Armani, which is gorgeous, gorgeous, very balmy, sweet, round, seductive, tuberose, jasmine scent incredibly beautiful and sophisticated so I think that this is a perfume that at least when I wear it I feel kind of sexy and uh, really feminine and this one really is a perfume that I find attractive and I believe that a sexy perfume is one that makes you feel confident and this one is that for me so I'd say Rouge Malachite. Question number three which one is the most hyped perfume in your collection? And I do have a couple really hyped up perfumes. I was kind of in between the one that I chose in the end, uh, Delina and also um, Angel Share and Love Don't Be Shy. They're all kind of gathering a speed, but uh, I chose in the end the one that I have seen so much hype for a long, long time. And this one is Maison Francis Krukijan Baccarat Rouge. To me, this is the perfume that definitely has gained so much hype and many, many perfumes have gone afterwards and trying to replicate it. So I had to choose this one. That is a gourmand kind of candy floss for perfume that has a lot of like a projection power. It's very airy at the same time. So often what is interesting with this is that you may not smell it on yourself, but people in your vicinity can smell you from a long, far, far away. And uh, yeah, this is really interesting and um, I like it. I don't know if it's worth the hype. I'd say yes. Perhaps if you're into the candy floss business, that is worth the hype. It's certainly a very unique scent. So, well, maybe not today anymore, but back in its time. So when it just came out, I really like it and I'm a huge, huge fan of Maison Francis Crocogian. I think he's a, you know, absolute master perfumer and I love his style of work and um, this is one that I love wearing. So 
Baccarat Rouge. Question number four is perfume in your collection that get the most hate. And I was looking around really and trying to pinpoint what is a perfume that is really hated by many people. And I had like a bit of a struggle because I don't really think I, well, that's very subjective to say really what is a hated perfume or not, but I couldn't really pinpoint only one that was the one that was most hated, but I remember reading on Fragrantica uh, reviews on these perfumes that I will show you, and um, they are very polarizing. So the first one is Tom Ford White Patchouli. This is really a uh, unique scent, and I tend to really like it. So for me, this is a very cold, very um, upscale, kind of like a perfume that doesn't want to impress you and it's just so like a strong woman who is very successful and doesn't really care what you think. It does not smell like a patchouli. It's kind of very sophisticated to my nose, but I understand that the uh, opening is a bit sharp and some people say that it smells like a paint to them. And overall, the whole vibe of this perfume is really cold. So um, some people love it, some people hate it. And I thought that was one polarizing. And I do have another one. Uh, this one, as I mentioned, uh, Francis Kirkjian, this one was made by him for Lanvin. And this is Rumor. And uh, this one kind of gained a lot of... Uh, I was reading comments on Fragrantica again. And I also go back and forth with this one is really, really strong, sharp, floral that reminds of Narciso Rodriguez and has a great uh, performance throughout the day, really, really strong. And it's very feminine and crisp and clean, musky. But for some reason, maybe because it's a bit sharp, uh, people love it or hate it. I don't know where I stand, but I have to be in the mood to wear it because I'm not one for the you know, the, the white mask type of perfumes, but it's not a bad perfume by any means. I mean, I, I sometimes enjoy wearing it. <laughs> so yeah, this one was also one on my list. Question number five is, what is your favorite perfume to wear to sleep? And I do wear perfume to sleep, always. And what I find is that I usually either gravitate towards something vanilla -y, or if I want to use up a perfume faster and it's not like a scent bomb that I will suffocate me when I'm sleeping. So if it's something that I could pull off wearing to bed and it won't disturb me, I tend to spray it that way. But one that I chose uh, is from Kenzo and it's called Amour. This is a very soothing perfume that I find to be very appropriate when I go to bed because it has this calming effect on me. This one has tea and rice and many other notes, but it is quite an offensive and skin scent, but it still projects. I find it when I wake up in the middle of the night that I can still smell it on me. And it's really this kind of like a, a bit like a lotion cream type of scent. Almondy, I think as well. Um, overall, very, very feminine and I really like it, but for some reason, because it's so like a soothing scent, I tend to reach for it when I go to bed and this bottle is so huge. <laughs> yeah, I really like this one. So that's my answer for number five. Question number six is best new purchase. And boy, oh boy, have I been making some purchases lately. That is, I'm trying to curb this for now, but I need to mention this one. So this is Boucheron. Ambre Alexandri and that uh, is something that has kind of got me addicted and I can't stop smelling this scent. It is so nice and I wish it was denser so I could feel it all the time because it kind of envelops you and um, you can feel it but it kind of stays close to the skin and I feel like it's more ple a present to the people around you. This one smells like a uh, apple pie it's really like an ambery apple pie, quite sexy as well, comforting, really sophisticated scent. And it does have some vibes with Angel's Share, which I love. So for me, having a giant bottle of this, it's like, you know, apple pie fest. Absolutely love it. And I wish it was like a thicker consistency so I can just like roll in the apple pie goodness. So weird, I know, I am. Oh my God, this, this is just so good. <laughs> 
yeah so this one is maybe maybe my favorite uh, uh recent purchase i do have two perfumes coming on the way so i'm really curious what they would be but for now this is top of my recent purchases question number seven is which is the most warm perfume of all times and i don't really have it in my collection at the moment but it must be dior addict and this one was for the longest time my signature scent uh, my current signature scent you will see a bit later but uh, Dior Addict is something that I really love to this day as well I have not had it for a couple of years so I'm not sure how its reformulations have changed it if at all uh, if you are familiar please let me know how you find them is it worth buying the newer version but this one to me always have reminded me of Christmas. Uh, it is a floral oriental with lots of notes. There's jasmine, there's blackberry, there is tonka, vanilla. It is, uh, back in the day, there weren't that many, back in the day, gourmandy type of perfumes. And this one was kind of sweet, but not sugary. And it reminded me of Christmas because of, um, it gave me like a cinnamon uh, vibe. And uh, I've loved wearing it. So apparently I've had I do have a sweet tooth, so I've had this type of uh, perfume taste for a very long time. This one was for me my favorite, like all time favorite perfume. And I used to wear it over 10 years. Like I really, really love this perfume. And I've had it in my collection until maybe the last five years or so. Uh, and this one, I should get another bottle. Like, I don't know why I don't have it. Uh, it is so beautiful and addictive and I think it deserves more attention. I know it is popular, but I haven't heard people talk about it in a while and I should maybe buy a bottle and start talking about it because I believe that this perfume is very, very good and I don't want it disappearing from the market like it happens to many beautiful perfumes because people just forget about them. Uh, it had amazing performance. Uh, also, I feel very cozy wearing it. I The more I talk about it, the more I feel like I should get another bottle. So yeah, Dior Addict as my most worn perfume of all time. Question number eight, which perfume gets you most compliments? And this is my current signature scent, Tom Ford Noir Parfum. It does share to my nose, it's not a dupe or anything, but there is this spicy vibe that is similar to uh, Dior Addict but these perfumes are obviously very different. Uh, this is a spicy, seductive, feminine, sweet, but not too much. So it does have a little bit of a gourmandy vibe, but it never goes in the gourmand territory because it's a very spicy scent. And it kind of lasts and it envelops you in this spicy aroma and people kind of notice you as well. So I think it must have a very, very good performance because I, I do get a lot of people commenting and actually complimenting my perfume, which never happens because I don't know why. <laughs> my perfumes are great. I don't know why I'm not getting. Uh, maybe they don't perform as well, I, I assume. But I really, really love this one. This is my second bottle and um, I'm looking forward to using this up and getting a third bottle because for me, this is everything. It's like, it's spicy, it's sweet, it's seductive, it's feminine, it's grown up, uh, but it's not like a stuck up kind of perfume. So it's, it's perfect for when you want to feel feminine and a little bit sweet, but not like going into the sugar territory. So the one is this definitely that gets me most compliments. Question number nine is the most surprising perfume in your collection. And I have two. Uh, two options to show you. One is by Memo and it is Winter Palace. This one, when I purchased it, this was perhaps my second Memo perfume and uh, the first one being Siwa. So I bought it because it was so different than what I usually go for. And on initial spray, I kind of found it quite masculine. So I thought this is a great scent, but I want to smell it on a guy because it just feels like on me, it's a bit masculine. But now I tend to really come around to it and it does have, mm, this is a red tea and bergamot kind of scent. So this is imagine like having a, 
a red tea with citruses, has a bit of vanilla, it is not sweet perfume, it is very heavy on the citrus and the citruses to me are very realistic. So they are kind of zesty, bright citruses. They are not, um, you know, the fluffy Dolce & Gabbana type of light blue style of lemon. This is more like serious citrus and bright, fresh, in your face, really, dare I say, yummy citrus, but you can feel the zest from this perfume and the tea. It gives it this amazing backdrop in which the citruses are popping up. So this one now I am using when I want to feel soothed. For example, if I'm doing yoga, I like to wear this. I find it so calming and uh, it really is a cool scent. So when I spray it, I do feel like coolness and refreshment when I wear this perfume. And so now I don't necessarily think it's a manly perfume, it's just something very different than what I typically would wear. And it does have its place and time. I have used up maybe like a 20 ml from this and I don't want it to go. So yeah, this was a surprise for me. Now the other surprising perfume, which also kind of blew me away was uh, Satin Mood, Oud Satin Mood by uh, Maison Francis Kirkjian. This one I did test. I had a couple times the little samples from Maison Francis Kirkjian website uh, and I tested it. I really, really liked it. It smelled like this warm rose that was so feminine and beautiful. The moment I bought it, the full big bottle, it like knocked me back a couple steps because this perfume, it, it was such a powerhouse, it still is. It kind of completely takes over and it is so potent. I didn't get that from the sample because like tiny sample, I don't know how good re representation they are to the real bottle. And uh, honestly, this is such a powerful, gorgeous, amazingly luxurious scent that it really fills up a room. And it smells a lot of beautiful roses that are soft and a bit sweet. But then there is the oud, which is not this harsh oud, uh, which kind of I'm not a fan of really. This is beautiful. So it's in perfect balance with the rose. And it really shocked me initially when I bought it that this perfume is absolutely serious. It means business. So yeah, Maison Francis Kirkjian, oud satin mood. Highly recommend this one. And the last question, which is your favorite, absolute favorite of all time? Now, this is such a difficult question and I just really struggled. I already spoke of my two signature scents, so Dior Addict and Tom Ford Noir Parfum, which would definitely be up there. And I'm looking at now my current collection, what are my favorite perfumes? I know this is like of all time, so I would refer to my uh, signature scents more but I didn't want to repeat myself. So uh, I would speak of two perfumes that are, one is currently my absolute favorite and another one is uh, Lyra from Zerjov. So this one, why is on that spot is because of its resemblance to a perfume that I just loved and adore. And I am the only person perhaps who bangs on about it in 2021, but uh, Lolita Lempica L, back in the day, rest in peace, I still remember you. It smells so similar to that and it brings me memories and uh, it makes me feel so comforted. So for me, Lyra by Zerjov definitely has a special place in my heart and in my collection. And the other one, which is a recent absolute rave train over here, this is Angel's Share and I've been addicted to this. It's scary how much and I am sorry if I keep talking about it in every video, but it is that good. So. It does bear a resemblance, just a second, we'll fetch this one, yeah. So it does bear resemblance to this one, although this kind of has more spices and more warm, more warmth. <laughs> it is, <laughs> both are very delicious. This is a little bit more fruity to my nose, but mm, this one and the whole scent profile of warm apple pie apparently is something that I'm very much into at the moment. So there you have it guys, these were my 10 answers to the questions of the perfume tag by Simple Chic Life. Let me know in the comments, uh, feel free to answer all the questions, I will leave them in the description box so you can either do this tag yourself 
or also you can reply in the comments what are your most favorite ones which is like the least popular in your collection etc uh, it's very interesting to hear other people's favorites and hate it <laughs> so i'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video take care bye